Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. I noticed that a lot of you that subscribe to my channel have subscribed recently because of a video that I made about a documentary coming out called A Fatherless America. Because of the attention that was brought to that video because of another video that was made, I decided to clear up a couple of things and also use this opportunity as an education uh, moment for those that may be interested in making a documentary. Because of the hatred towards the man that is making a fatherless America from a small group of people. They have been giving out false information on what it takes to make a documentary to attempt to make this person look bad. I think that this is very detrimental uh, to black people who may be interested in making a doc documentary because they may think that this is an easy process or one that can just be done uh, fairly easy, easily by uh, picking up a camera and shooting. It takes a lot more t than that to make a documentary. And the people that have spoken out against this documentary um, not being out yet also know that it takes a whole lot more than that to make a documentary, especially if you have never made a documentary before and you were just someone who thought that it would be, that came up with a topic and thought it would be a great idea. You're going to have to put in a lot of work that you may not be expecting to put in. So I would like to take this opportunity as I think that any opportunity, whether it be an argument or a disagreement, should always lead back to a teachable moment, especially for those who have been marginalized over time, such as members of the black community. So the first things first, I'm going to go right into the topic and that's how to make a good documentary if you want to make one that is dynamic and powerful that people are interested in. So the first step that you're going to need to do is choose a topic. Um, you want to choose a topic that both you're interested in and you think that other people may be interested in and that they will watch. You want to send out reports to your friends and family. You could do little small surveys to try to pull people in so that they can take part in helping you to choose this topic. You can of course come up with your own topic and uh, then send out your feelers to your friends and family to see whether or not they would be interested in it. And once you have that information, of course, you can go ahead and start to make up what exactly you want the purpose of your film to be. So what do you want out of your film? At the end of the day, once the film is all done and everything, all the production is done, what do you want people to leave your film feeling? What do you want them, uh, what is the story that is going to make people interested in exactly what it is that you're trying to portray? The next thing that you're going to have to do, and this is a really important thing that some people really don't take time to do, and that is research your topic. You're going to have to take intense time to research whatever the topic is that uh, you feel you want to speak about. That means you're going to have to find statistical information. Uh, you're going to have to search for stories that have been written about this in the past, possibly someone who's already written a book or done a movie about uh, the topic that you're trying to portray. You want to find information that is specific to the groups of people that you're trying to reach. So whatever your topic is, you want to find information that is specific to uh, that, that demographic. So if you're going to be a, um, doing a documentary on health in the African American community, when you're doing your research, you want to focus on research that pertains to African Americans. You don't want to go out and find research that um, pertains to Caucasians because that would be off topic from what exactly it was that uh, you wanted to do your documentary on. Research is so important and this is what is going to take up a lot of your time. This is what should take up a lot of your time. 
because when you're doing a documentary you don't want to give out false information because in the age that we live in there's a lot of fact checkers and people are always going to be going back and saying oh well you said that you know this and you know it could cause a lot of confusion it could cause a lot of headache for you if you don't know what you're talking about and you're just going out and making a documentary the fifth thing that needs to be done and now if you're someone who is not good at writing this is going to be a problem for you you may have to hire somebody to do this so the fifth thing that you're going to need to do is write an outline the I the outline pretty much should include every step that you want to take when making your film that would include the idea of your story uh, where you want it, where you want your story to lead, um, every step that you basically every step that you want to take for making your film, you can find online if you Google, you will be able to find um, uh, templates of documentary outlines. So you don't necessarily have to be a writer and you don't necessarily have to hire a writer if you just find find those outlines and go ahead and, and follow those outlines whenever I don't really know how to do something the first thing I do is go and Google and look for a template nine times out of ten you'll be able to find one also um, I will include some links to templates in the description box below I definitely will have a link for you to be able to do that so that's the first five steps and what we're going to go over now is we're going to go over your staff, your techniques, and your scheduling. So the first thing that you're going to have to do in this part two is you're going to have to find a staff. And especially you're going to have to find a staff if you have never done a documentary before. This includes a cameraman, this includes lighting people, this includes writers, this includes researchers, this includes editors, actors, audio recorders, and technical consultants. Um, you are going to need to find actors if you are doing a docu film. It's and, and um, Fatherless America is going to be a docu film, from what I understand from talking to Tommy. So you are going to have to find actors to act out uh, B-roll shots in your film because it, unless you're just going to be shooting straight on with. Uh, celebrities or whoever you're going to be recording it's very important that you find some kind of trained actors to play those um, b-roll shots when you are hiring or recruiting for your team you're going to find that there's going to be some pitfalls you're going to go through a lot of thinking that you found the right person and not necessarily being able to work with that person but don't be uh, discouraged by that because eventually you will find people that you're able to work with and it, it'll go great and everything will flow and this is another thing that takes up a lot of time especially if you're someone who again has never filmed anything before uh, some people think that it's going to be very easy you should be able to just find somebody and work with everybody but it, 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 different personalities sometimes don't always work together so yes sometimes you in your film pr filming process with hiring people you're gonna have to maybe decide not to work with certain people and that's okay because you want your documentary to be the best that it can be even though you're going to be hiring mostly outside work if you're someone who um, has never filmed before 
you still need to learn the basics of filmmaking. So you need to learn how shots are produced, how they're staged, how to edit, all of the basic things that come with uh, making a film. You also need to do some research on that. You can do that by searching on Google. There's lots of video tutorials that will show you the basics of film editing and filmmaking. The next step that you're going to need to do is get equipment. So if there's uh, equipment that you need to buy as far as camera equipment, lighting, sound, all of those things, all of those uh, technical things that help your film, you're going to need to get those. Now, do you necessarily have to buy those? No. Uh, you can borrow those. You can also ask your friends and family uh, if they have that equipment, can you get it from them? Uh, there's a lot of other things that you can do. Uh, you can rent from rent to own or one of those shops if you need to you don't necessarily have to have money and buy it right out there's other sites like finger hut where you can actually increase your credit and also um, pay monthly towards uh, filming equipment I'm not sure if they have uh, filming equipment but that site pretty much has everything so I'm sure that they have it so you can use the site like that if uh, you feel comfortable with doing that while also increasing your credit at the same time. So the next thing that you're going to have to do is organize, outline, and schedule your shooting. So get everything that you have organized together meet with people to do your interviews um, make sure that you contact these people early uh, make sure that you have your specific writings pictures drawings music and other documentary uh, or other documents together that you're ready to use um, make sure that you have written down any dramatic uh, rec recreations you want to shoot and that you search for your actors and your prompts and your shooting location and then you want to go ahead and start uh, making a schedule so say I'm going to start shooting on blah 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 date and then just go ahead and make your schedule say on Monday the 5th we're going to shoot at 1 p.m every Monday we're going to go and we're going to shoot or we're going to shoot certain celebrities during a certain month where we're going to go to this city or that city. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to try to find a shooting schedule and post that in this uh, description below also. And the next thing that you're going to do after you have everything put together, after you have your shooting schedule, after your outlines put together, after everything is organized, you know who your staff is going to be, you know uh, what kind of music and pictures and uh, you know you have everything that you um everything that you need for your film put together already the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to start shooting and as you can see there's a huge long process that happens before you ever start uh, shooting your film uh, don't just start shooting pieces of the documentary before you have your stuff together because your shots won't make sense because you won't have um, all of the steps that it takes already so you won't know what you're going to be doing you don't know how you want it to get shot you're just going to have a bunch of random shots that you won't be able to use in your film so after all that you're going to start shooting of course you want to be interviewing relevant people people that can convey the message that you have set out um, 
it doesn't necessarily always have to be celebrities. It could just be people in the community that are prominent members that people will recognize. Um, but if you're going to be shooting a big documentary, then of course you want to have celebrities. You want to have people that, uh, that other people are attracted to. You want to have charismatic people. And you want to have people that are very versed on the topic that you have chosen. Make sure also that if you're going to be doing like a docufilm that you get live footage of relevant events. So say that you're going to be doing a documentary, like I said, on health in the black community. Make sure that you get film of uh, maybe there's a health fair for black people going on somewhere near you. Go and get film of that. That'll be B-roll footage that you can definitely use in your film. So if there is an event that's going on that has something to do with what you're talking about, make sure that you put those kind of events on your schedule. Go to those events and film, um, of course, with asking permission. And just go ahead and film and then you can use that footage in your film. You can also pull that footage um, that somebody else may have shot from a stock, stock photo site. There are many free stock photo sites, but if you're trying to find something that's relevant to what you're doing, the most likely thing is it's going to cost a little bit of money. Um, but if you're going to be doing a serious film, you shouldn't have any problem with investing in something like that. So the next thing that you're going to be doing is establishing your film shop. Uh, if you've watched any documentary before, you may have noticed that the entire film isn't just footage of interviews. There's a lot of different things that are going on in the documentary. There's uh, a lot of B-roll footage going on and a lot of uh, events and stuff like that. Those things are called establishing shots. And they are small, but they're definitely important to your documentary. And then there's another thing that I just talked about, which of course is B-roll. B-roll is um, when I was being taught about doing film in documentaries and so forth, I was told that B-roll is actually the most important part of shooting. And I, at the time, didn't think that that was necessarily true. But now I would say that it is because B-roll covers up a lot of mess. So if you make a mistake, your B-roll footage is good, what's going to be able to help you out of those mistakes. Where you can take out the mistake, put your B-roll footage in, add some audio, and boom, your mistake is fixed. So B-roll footage is very important. And what what is B-roll? That's what you're probably like, oh, oh maybe you don't know what B-roll is. B-roll is just film. It's just stuff. Uh, stock film that you may have. It could be the trees. It could be um, it could be the clouds. It could be children playing on a playground. It could be a shiny car headlight. It could be anything. Um, B-roll is just random film that you use to add some extra dynamics to your project. Now me, of course, would suggest that your B-roll be something to do with your project, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. So let's see here. The next thing that I'm going to be talking about with you is shooting dramatic reactions. So if you don't have any real life footage of your event uh, of events that are going on that have to do something with your documentary, what you can do is you can shoot some dramatic reactions. You could shoot like a, sh a, a person frowning or a person laughing or a person um, in shock and this could be so another thing that could be used as b-roll for your film. Make sure that you keep a diary of how you're filming with each day and how you would like to improve on it and also go back to your outline and see what you've already done and start scratching out things that you've already done and just make sure that you keep something some kind of record of how things went how you can improve the next day 
and what you would like to see different because this will definitely help you over time as you're filming and as you're shooting your documentary it'll just keep you in the mindset that you always want to be improving on um, your shots and how you speak to people when you're interviewing them next thing is making a new outline for your finished film so the new outline should include basically everything that you've already done. Um, it should have all of the information about your film, those that you shot, things that you went through, things that you might have found interesting. Um, little, it should also include if you have a certain B-roll clips that you have taken and you want to make sure that those are definitely in the film. It should also have a I would just like to say before we continue that this part is actually assembling and sharing your film. This is putting the film together. So at this point you've actually shot, you've done your audio, you've done everything, you've done your outline, you're ready to actually put the film together. So the next thing that you're going to be doing is creating a graphical animated in uh, your graphical and animated inserts. So this is going to be of course the job of your editor to go ahead and, f and um, put in where you want your graphic your graphical and animated inserts to be inside of your film also of course you want to go through music you want to try to find royalty free music to use in your film and then the last step of course is editing your film and this will probably be somebody who you actually have hired and they will go through and you of course need to be with this process every step of the way practically standing over these people's shoulder um, and they will go through and edit what you don't want to be edited and this is this may take quite a long time when you're talking about a documentary editing of a documentary is not going to be a quick or easy process so I would suggest definitely hiring an editor that knows what they're doing um, so that they can go through and they can remove what you don't want they can go through and they can put in what you do want and it should be someone that you generally like because they probably are going to frustrate you a lot and then you are at your final steps and this will be your testing your marketing and your screening the first thing that you're going to need to do is do a screening and when you do a screening it should be a small group of people this should be your friends your family your parents you know uh, you want to get as many people involved as possible but make sure that you keep the group as a tight-knit group of people that um, that you uh, like <laughs> they don't necessarily have to like you but that you think that their opinion is gonna help you along the way 
you want to create a feedback survey this will be something that they can actually put uh, I didn't like this I don't like this oh I like this I don't like this and then of course leave a little space for them to leave uh, comments and then after you do your screening, you can go ahead and start to spread the word about your film, get people excited about it. Um, and if you have a website, of course, you want to start to get that information up on the website. Uh, so the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your film on the road. So you want to go to small towns and you want to go to uh, different places to start uh, promoting your film and doing small screenings in different little towns that you may think would be a great place uh, to share your film. Always remember that at the end of the day that making a documentary film is a long and tiring process. But at the end of the day, it will be extremely rewarding for you when you have made everything come together and people love your film and they want to see it and they're passing it along. But like I said, please don't get discouraged because it's it may take a year, two years, you know, three years to get everything put together. If you want to do it right, take your time, be patient with yourself, don't try to rush it even if other people try to rush you. Take it slow, take your time, get everything that you needed situated, get a team in place that is going to be loyal and um, help you out and stay with you. If you have any questions about making a documentary film, please feel free to contact me. Of course, if you have a question for me, I can always research it because at the end of the day, I'm a very good researcher. Well, thank you very much for watching this 30 minute video on how to make a good documentary. And I hope that this helps you um, on your journey and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.